So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects, an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. consecutive week of cinema psyops i'm your host court the guy that's gonna be taking every legal hemp extract he can get his hands on in an effort to feel more like a human being and riding that delta eight wave himself is my co-host matt all i'm saying and i'll say just one more time that if you're a realtor and you can't sell a house that may or may not be haunted by a couple very sexual bisexual vampire women to a man i I don't know man you're not very good at your job i'm just saying maybe it's time for a different career path you know what i'm saying perhaps it's because the ghosts also feed upon the blood and kill their occupants of said house there are worse ways to go 
I mean, listen, in those times, and looking at some of these guys, I mean, listen, heart disease was already going to take them. Might as well get a good time. Okay. This is great for the review, but we got to give them the pablum. You're, you're, you're cheating oh, them I on know. the pablum. Uh, well, I, usually I just cheat with the pablum and say something relevant to the movie. I've started doing that recently. You had to do a follow-up question. <laughs> you know what? Let's start with the haunted house thing, because tis the season, if, the, I'm, if I'm wrong. Tis the season for haunted houses. Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the, the spooky time which is why I'm putting in, you know, horror films as much as I can for the month of October. Because I know everyone out there is trying to hit their 31 days of Halloween, which this is the first year since the start of this podcast that I haven't done one. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had the trip in the middle of it, and then we had a guest that was staying with us. So it just didn't feasibly work out kind of for me to be able to do it. And I also wanted to take a break because last year I did at least three a day, sometimes more, and I ended up with like nearly 400, I think, I was watched in one month. I mean, you can crash on that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> well, and I, I, I was counting it, it was instances or viewings of storylines, so whether it was an entire season of, hey. of a TV show or an individual, like, Treehouse of Horror, I counted it. Yeah. Hey, listen, I want you to tell me where did you learn how to do this kind of stuff? <laughs> I learned it by watching my dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I learned to marathon TV like that because I grew up in the middle of nowhere and there was nothing to fucking do but watch TV. Unless you're, you, unless you wanted to walk for like 20 miles and then end up in the middle of nowhere where no one gave a fuck again and there was still nothing to do. I mean, I'm not into that all that walking shit. That's that's for the birds, man. <laughs> Probably I, why I again will die of heart disease. But that's neither here nor there. When I went back to visit my family, I drove my wife around and I was showing her. I'm like, yeah, I used to walk from our house to here where there used to be a pool hall. And she's like, how far was that? I'm like a couple miles. <laughs> Quite that's a not a lie. Like. I drove around. I did kind of the same thing this summer. I drove my family around the town I grew up in, you know, in middle school and such. And I was like, yeah, I'd ride my, I show them the house I grew up in. I go, I'd ride my bike from here. And then I go, and we usually end up around here, down here. And my wife's like, wow, times are changing, huh? And I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> it's, it's nothing I would have let our son do. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's what my wife asked me. She's like, why did you walk? Why didn't you have a bike? I'm like, yeah, of course I had a bike. But when you bike places, then you got to find a place to chain the fuck bike up and I was like trust me the pool hall did not have good places to try and chain your bike up yeah <laughs> you See, know? I, we were lucky enough we never had to chain a bike up you know leaving it whether outside a uh you know a, a baseball card shop or a gas station or a video movie store or just a friend's house uh it was a it was a small enough town that n- no one was gonna bother with uh middle school kids bikes <laughs> <laughs> until meth shows up in your area anyway yeah it would t- it would have taken meth but like I was, I was grown up before Mess showed up. Well, <laughs> even though I grew up in the middle of nowhere, there was also um, like a state park and some other things that attracted people all the time. So there were always people that were going to yeah. just steal a kid's bike, particularly at a pool hall that was basically at a roadside attraction for tourists anyway. I, I, can, I can definitely see that. But uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. Um, I, we were right on the interstate, so I guess there was a chance. But we're such a small town right on the interstate. People were blowing past us to get to the next bigger town in uh, Wisconsin or blew past us to go across the bridge to get to Minneapolis, Minnesota. No one really wanted to stop in our town. Now, in that town, now it's fucking huge. <laughs> that town's exploded with people who want to live there who work in Minneapolis. So you've been usurped into a suburb. Pretty much. Yeah, it's definitely been usurped into a suburb. I mean, that's how my dad used it. Uh my dad worked out of Minneapolis and then the, but you know he wanted to raise us in a smaller town, so that's what happened. <laughs> See, now we've given them the pablum, and here we're going to yes. give them the fucking break before we do the review for fucking vampires from 1974. Woo. Yeah. This will keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet. My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting. But that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com 
forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. So those of you that are currently listening to the Pirate Radio edited, which I believe is like oh, all six of you, seven if you count me, that was Vampire Kiss from the band Resurrects. This week, all of the music is going to be in some way, shape, or form about vampirism and or sucking. One thing that wow. definitely doesn't suck is this old school fucking trailer. Word succulent, sinister. Theirs is the ultimate lust. They are vampires. Very unnatural ladies. Your blood will freeze as they lead you down the corridors of terror. Ravishers who tempt men's appetites and feed their own. Vampires. Their lips are moist and very, very red. They'll rivet you with terror. Vampires, they trail the aroma of love, the scent of death. You arouse me more than any woman I've met for... Kill him. Kill him. Cross their path and you are a sacrifice to evil. Who are you? Where the hell do you come from? Vampires, very unnatural ladies... They are the dark screams in the blood. The screams you won't be able to hold back when you see vampires. Adult terror from Canvas. I told you that trailer didn't suck. No, that did not suck. That was a, that was a hardcore trailer right there. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, I know that we're both dying to fucking talk about this, but I just want to bring up that uh, our man, Jose Ramon Laraz, is back in the motherfucking house, and I am super happy that he is. All right. So, vampires with a Y, so you know it's fancy. Not an I, like us dumb Americans. It's with a Y. Fancy. <laughs> Okay. It's fancy. Shut up, Court. Be cool. All okay, right. Well. So, <laughs> I mean, damn, Court, have fun. All right. So, two ladies, they're getting down. They're having just a good old, good old fashioned time. Just, just having fun. Nothing wrong with it. Everything's going great. And uh, then some asshole busts in and shoots them both to death. So, that guy's a prick. Uh, what if he is the husband to one of these ladies and is just jealous that he's being cheated upon? It's still, a prick move. You don't kill somebody. Adultery is not a. Grounds for murder. Murderous thing anymore. <laughs> okay, so if the pornos that I've been watching have led me to believe anything, it's that the man should just walk in there and say, Hey, ladies, need a hand? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like maybe like put out a cable repairman outfit and walk in there and say, do you ladies need me to lay some cable? <laughs> you sure look like you have a lot of outlets with no cable. <laughs> I have just the adapter you need. Um, all right, so... Well, now we cut to the present day, and uh, there's a guy, he uh, checks in a hotel. There's an old man there who says he thinks he knows this man. Uh, he's seen him before, and the man's kind of startled by it, and he says, no, I'm, I'm afraid not. I don't think we ever really revisit this, uh, but I think it's supposed to maybe tell you something, but I'm not sure. The movie doesn't come right out and say it, so... 
All right. Um, yeah, it feels like a missing thread, and yeah. the whole film feels kind of like a fever dream. And I wonder if maybe this is just the version that we have left. Like maybe it got, yeah, maybe it got yeah, chopped up, up, and we're missing some stuff, like we've seen with like what was it, the house with the laughing windows? I think was yeah. like that. Yeah, um, yeah. This you, you're exactly right. By it's like a fever dream. Right, but uh, you're you're exactly right. But Laraz does have a bit of that style to his films, though, too, where. They feel almost surrealistic in moments, and this one certainly does have a very feverish dream-like state to it. So whether it's his intention or if it's another one of those victims of over-editing and we lost some of that footage, you know, when things got chopped out for censors or whatever, I really, I don't know, but it definitely serves to kind of help the disease this film creates. Yeah, you you feel disease already because, you know, he goes, hey, I, I think we've had you here before, and then he gives him that stare. And he's like, no, you must be mistaken. Uh, the British way, the polite British way of saying, hey, mind your own fucking business. Yeah, every um, time I watch this movie, I pay as much attention as I possibly can to it. Like, I really, really yeah. try to follow the story. And every time I feel like I never fucking watched this movie before. Yeah, I, I can see how you would say that. Yeah. And also it reinforces my thing. We, you know, you, we watch enough uh, kind of uh, uh, European movies, uh, and especially when they overlay uh, more British actors into it uh i just love the way that they are so polite and telling people to go fuck themselves um because that is that was totally a way when he gave that guy the look and said i'm sorry you must be mistaken it totally had the tone of shut your mouth old man if you know what's good for you yeah, it's like how dare you you fucking peasant yeah yeah how dare you speak to me you fucking dickwad but they're so polite <laughs> um, the words are phrased politely correct but the tone yeah. of it basically t- tells you oh, everything Right. It's a very yeah. disrespectful tone, which they're very good at over there. Yes, they really are. I, it's something I'm so jealous of because it's fucking awesome. So he gets into the room and immediately puts like eye drops in his eyes. Again, nothing ever comes of that story either. Uh, but I wrote it down because they put so much emphasis on it. And I thought that was going to be something. Um, I think the film's just trying to tell us you can't believe what you're seeing. Maybe. I don't know. Well, then we cut to uh, a couple's driving, and a dude sees a lady on the side of the road. And the wife sees another lady hiding, but the the husband or boyfriend, he d- doesn't see it. And he's like, I just saw the one lady, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Right after they uh, drive by, uh, one lady actually gets picked up by a gentleman. So uh, then they drive away, and the other lady who was hiding runs after the car. See, this, so- this is all still very surrealistic. And dreamlike. Yeah. Especially because, like, even for the time, you could tell what those ladies would be wearing would be quite out of place, right? Right, Like, right. from a different time. Yeah, yeah, like, they're... It's like cloaks and robes out. We're well into jeans and, you know, t-shirt time. <laughs> right, the way that they're dressed, you're pretty much thinking to yourself, well, they're either hippies or vampires. If I luck out, they're yeah. vampires. Yeah, because they're hippies, that's just, jeez. Uh, so... <laughs> Well, how, how bad is it that we'd rather, you know, have the life force sucked out of us than deal with hippies? I mean, in all honesty, dude, in either way, I'm getting the life force sucked out of me, if you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> at least the first way is more fun. <laughs> yeah, at least they're a lot more direct about it when it's vampires. Yeah, right. Well, anyway, they're camping. Like I said, the couple camps out for a night. Uh, they have a camper attached to the car right in front of a really large old mansion. And this actually leads to our first clip. Well, we've certainly covered a good distance in the last few days. Yes, we yeah. have. What's the matter? I mean nothing. You look worried. Have you noticed that house over there? Yeah, it looks abandoned. This place frightens me. It's not the first time we've camped in the woods. Oh, I think we're both tired. Perhaps. Well, you'll be more cheerful after a night's sleep. I'll go down to the lake tomorrow. Do with any fish. Why should one of them be hiding behind a tree? Oh. Why should one of them be hiding behind a tree? I didn't see anyone hiding. And I did. And one woman stood on the edge of the road. Another one was hiding in the woods, watching for something. Just waiting. Well, perhaps she was waiting whilst her friend stopped the car. Somebody's 
nobody in that house. I just saw a light move in one of the windows. That's spooky, man. That's some creepy yeah. shit right there. That seems spooky. Then the, uh, the a good thunder strike right at the end. That, of course, always helps create a nice little, you know, classic aura of spookiness. Okay, this is an Arrow video release, and I want to comment on the image quality of the film, right? Mm-hmm. This is definitely a film because the print of it has a lot of film grain to it, and you can definitely see the film grain, but there's not really any damage. So they definitely, like, repaired it or at least made it look as good as they possibly could but left in the natural grain of whatever film stock it was actually shot on and yeah the image is mostly like this really subtle soft focus with that grain over top of it which gives it an almost like animation like quality and feel when you're watching the film and also makes it feel even more surrealistic you know what i'm saying oh no i understand yeah completely yeah and yeah and the reason that i wanted to bring it up is it's in this sequence in particular where the thunderstorm's hitting and they're running through the creepy house and the, that starts to happen and then the film grain is it's not in every shot but particularly a lot of the sex scenes and then anything that's in the house where it's a little bit darker the film grain's a little bit more pronounced um yeah. in a lot of those kinds of scenes and that really adds this uh sort of dreamlike quality to it because it softens the focus a little bit and it also just kind of messes with the image just enough to where it's noticeable film grain but not like completely distracting you know what i mean no i get it and i think one of the bigger things about this also that helps is the um uh the fact the weather it's always dark it's always creepy even you know the, what i mean yeah even the daytime is like fucking oh well it's england but it's like overcast as fucking dark as shit at all times yeah like england is the place for vampires right like if a vampire can survive in like overcast sun um i'm pretty sure england's the place they want to be right yeah right no exactly yeah <laughs> i mean i i would agree it's so and it's also mossy and so like there's always a constant fog it's just a it's a great atmosphere for the movie it makes everything the creepiest shit ever yeah yeah it's it's so surrealistic and dreamlike in it's just dripping with like fantasy dreamlike quality all yeah. over and it's so visually a feast like nothing else matters in the film besides mm -hmm. that like you, you just you could care less about anything else just yeah. enjoying that much at that aspect of the film but, yeah i agree yeah it's creepy but we luck out that this is actually a really effective horror porn yeah yeah it's it's really is effective <laughs> horror porn and that's that's true <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's softcore but that's that's basically what it is it's an erotic it's, it's, an, it's an erotic yeah. horror film is what it is yeah 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 oh yeah pretty much so, uh, the later that night, we hear a man scream, and then a bloody hand hits the windshield of the, or the, the window of the camper. The lady's scared, but the man does not think anything is actually out there. Let's go back to bed. So, I mean, way to just discount how your lady's feeling right there. It's kind of rude. Dude, um, it's like 5.30 in the morning. He's just tired. We all make mistakes. <laughs> What an asshole. So anyway, <laughs> uh, next uh, the next morning, the lady sees uh, two wi the two women that are running in the forest. Then we see uh, that uh, some dude, but it's in the car that the lady got into. He's dead in his car, and he's all sorts of fucked up, bloody. Um, the couple then, they talk about the ladies uh, in, in how she saw her in the morning and what, what everything that happened. The husband, again, is fairly dismissive. Um, then we see that uh, one of those ladies... Uh, the same lady who was picked up uh, the day before, she gets picked up again by the guy who was staying in that hotel. They have some chit-chat while the other lady watches from the woods. By the way, not a lot of names in here. So just to let you know, it's going to be a lot of the ladies, dudes, and people. Um, <laughs> we are shown these images of these people. We are not given nor do we hear their names. Yeah. There's barely it any dialogue in this. It's just very much show, not tell. Yes, exactly. Um, the couple then, you know, they do some couple stuff during the day, just hang out. Um, you know, just, I think one, uh, the lady's painting, uh, the guy's fishing, you know, just having fun. I think this um, is showing how much in love and relaxed they are, or maybe they're Yeah, just, they're a couple. Yeah. They're, they're an established couple. You know, this is not a new romance. This is, this is a, a, a long-term relationship. Yeah. So basically it's boring. Yeah. And they travel the, the countryside together. <laughs> You're right. Well, so right. the lady uh, brings the uh, hotel guy back to her their house. It's the big mansion. Uh, he builds a fire, and pretty much that ends that first 20 minutes. If there's anything you want to kind of say that we haven't already said about
about the overall feel of the movie so far. No, uh, I mean, it establishes that stuff very early on. So we couldn't wait for the 20 minutes to really talk about it because it's like right off the bat in your face with this very fantastical dreamlike quality. And, you know, the, the film grain and the way that they're showing everything. I mean, particularly the opening sex scene that we see in the film. That's where you really notice the film grain because it's all over their skin. And clearly that's what I'm staring at. Yeah, right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it gives it this very, you know, surrealistic quality where I realize I'm watching this on film and I'm not not detaching myself from like the story like I should be. Um, but I'm also just watching two people fuck. So I'm just really happy that I get to see him with all the film grain for some reason. Yeah, right. So it's all good. <laughs> and then I realized to myself, well, this is certainly going to make Matt feel a lot better after Rush Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it's not that Rush Week was terrible. Just, you know, bad for men. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad for men, but bad that men acted that way. It, you, and, right, right. And then the movie made the lead heroine fall for one of those men. <laughs> <laughs> right. But what we're getting here is not any better for women because there were two women that were slaughtered. One presumes for being together at as a couple and that it's a discriminatory very uh hate-filled decision in which they were executed or one could also assume that perhaps it's just the jealous lover of one of the two or both <laughs> being excluded and murdering them for that reason yeah something who knows yeah we don't all we know is they were uh post coitus cuddling and shot to death yeah and now they're suddenly back and we are led to believe that they may be spirits because they don't stray far from the castle grounds have you noticed that yeah i have they 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 have a particular distance they go yeah and they can only go a certain distance on the road which leads people right back to the castle so they have to direct them or they don't stay in the car very long if i'm not mistaken <laughs> They do not. Yeah, like if they're not going the right direction, the ladies ain't going to get a ride. That just ain't yeah, going to work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it makes me think that like it's more of a ghost story thing, but then we're going to see some stuff later. And obviously the name of the movie is Vampires. So you know there's going to be some- With vamp- a Y. Right. You know there's going to be some vampiric action going on. The trailer even promised some very unnatural ladies. <laughs> Yes. Wow. We start the next 20 minutes. Those two in the castle there in the mansion, they're flirting. And that's our next clip. I was asking myself. Asking? Well, I don't pretend that you should divulge all your secrets, but. Go on, ask. Is there a limit to the questions? There's a limit to the answers. Do you uh, live here alone? I often receive guests. What do you do for a living? I'm searching all the time, searching for interesting people. It's difficult to find really interesting people. I know, but I keep searching. I know how to fend for myself. I feel happier here than anywhere else. These walls have become my friends, my confidants. You're not easy to understand. That's the way I have to be accepted, with no questions. And no explanations. This is my lucky day. Don't ever say that. Never mind. I don't mind unusual situations. They come on their own. Like our meeting on the road today. Even this conversation's like a fever dream. Like, it's it's weird responses to weird statements. <laughs> yeah, um, this is the kind of territory that David Lynch would work in. It feels like Twin Peaks. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's several decades before Twin Peaks was even dreamed of, but it gives me that same sensation of what I experienced in a younger age myself in watching Twin Peaks, where I'm feeling very uncomfortable and uneasy, and everything about this does doesn't feel quite right and feels somewhat yeah. unnatural. And you're like, to this guy, how do you not feel like most of this is just off a little bit? <laughs> right. How are you not sensing what's going on here? And then you're like, okay, I get it. Woman and she's attractive and all that. But does your dick really blind you that fucking much? Yes. Yeah. And and, and we did say yes. <laughs> uh, Let's so. be honest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, what, what I'm, what I'm else am I going to say? So, uh, they, uh, they get naked, and then all of a sudden, right when they're kind of making out, he's like, uh, he doesn't think they're alone. He even says that, but she just starts kissing him, and he forgets about that uneasy feeling he has, and uh, 
they go to Bone Town. Um, quite, so, uh, quite erotic, uh, and a uh, lot of thrusting going on. And uh, yeah, for Birds. the only thing we're really lacking mm. for it to be like hardcore porn is actual shots of penetrative sex, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's about it. We don't have any penetrative sex shots being shown, so that's what basically puts it in the softcore realm. Because this, uh, this goes there, man. It really does. Yeah. Well, then after um, a while, they're sleeping, and he wakes up and he looks at her, and she's just catatonic, staring at him. Like even waves his hand in front of her face, and she does not flinch. She is not there, but her eyes are wide open. It that is some creepy ass shit right there. And then he just rolls over and goes back to sleep because he is just exhausted from all the loving okay first of all yes major red flag absolutely terrifying yeah yeah, yeah. totally don't blame him yeah but uh, well no i blame him because he stayed <laughs> oh so he should have got up and left he, he should have probably gotten out of there and gotten the fuck out oh if you think about it or well okay yeah no you would obviously stay i'm just saying <laughs> you're not saying you're not saying you're not saying he was right but you could understand. <laughs> right. It's like when we were talking earlier and you said that um, an affair is not an excuse for murder. And I'm like, well, no, it's not. But I do understand. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> you should still go to jail for murdering a cheating spouse. But like, I kind of understand, you know? Yeah, I get you. So anyway, uh, then he wakes up in the next morning and he feels very weak and he looks like shit. He gets up and he makes sure the door's locked. Uh, like, you know, like, because I think he still had that feeling like somebody's watching. But then he falls right back into bed and passes out again. Um, Then he wakes up in the morning and he's alone and he has this deep cut on his arm. But there's no blood on his arm. It's just a cut. And yet there's blood on the bed. He looks around and he finds a knife there, but there's no blood on the knife. Then he sees some broken glass that has blood on it. He's able to get dressed and he leaves. And he drives to the couple's camper and he asks them to help him. So they give him some medical help. Bandage him up. They say it looks pretty pretty deep all that and then he also makes mention that his watch is dead for some reason and that never happens so um well he said the couple patches him up and the lady asks about the house and the dude says you know the, is there anybody living there and the guy says you know i never got the answer to that um so then he uh he drives back up to the house and he falls asleep in his car. The ladies drive back up that night with her friend and another guy. Um, uh, so she, you know, says, hey, come on in. Come back into the house. So they all go in. And the guy, the new guy who joins the group, he's looking at this knife. And he's like, oh, that's really interesting. And uh, then he asks if he can make a phone call to some friends. But the one lady says, sorry, there's there's no phone here. And, uh, that's red flag number 5,670 fucking two. Um, look, he's going to stay, Matt, and you just have yeah. to accept the fact that this guy is going to ignore every red flag because of them titties. Listen, every man in this movie ignores every red flag in this goddamn movie. All right. Because of them titties. Because of them. Yeah. Because them titties, though. Yeah. Hey, I'm not uh, I'm not saying that I don't like really, really have some scorn for them for making the decisions. I'm just saying I understand. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying that they're making the right moves. I just understand. It. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're clearly making very poor decisions. And as a man standing outside of this, watching it as a movie, I can understand yeah. why they're making those choices. Well, the first lady sends the other two, the new guy and the blonde lady, uh, down to the cellar to uh, get some more wine and talks to the driver dude in our next clip. I waited for you all day until I fell asleep in the car. Forgive me about this morning. I thought I'd be back earlier. This girl, your friend. Miriam? Yes. Was she here last night? No, I told you we were alone. Just you and I. But does she live here with you? More or less, she's my girlfriend. We have a lot in common, get on very well together. But it's crazy to live in an old place like this. No telephone, a place almost in ruins. These walls could fall in on you any moment. Who is this chap, Rupert? A very nice man. How long have you known him? Since this afternoon. He gave us a lift here. I think we've chosen a bad spot for camping. Well, I don't see why. It's attractive and quiet. Nobody's bothered us. That's not the point. How often do you read of horrible things happening in just such a situation? Quiet, isolated corner. A couple like us. Oh, darling, please. 
Don't start all that again. Well, first there were those two women, and that man with a cut on his arm. Well, now you're exaggerating. The poor man came in search of help, which is perfectly natural. Well, you cut yourself, and the first thing you do is look for help. Logical, no? Well, when I asked him if anyone lived in the house or not, he avoided a proper reply. Well, not exactly. He implied in a very friendly manner that you shouldn't stick your nose into other people's affairs. And I find that perfectly reasonable. That's not the point. He said he didn't know if the place was inhabited or not. And then he spends his nights there. Now, why? Oh, for goodness sake. Because he probably has a wonderful time with that woman. Or the two women, the ones you're so concerned about. Or perhaps they live in the house. Or perhaps he lives there himself. Or somebody does. Well, how should I know? Oh, Harriet. No normal person would live in a place like that. No. No. Oh, Harriet. What were you doing? <laughs> Except for, you know, talking sense. <laughs> Do they seem excessively nosy about what's going on on the land that they're pretty much squatting on? Uh, well, Harriet does, definitely. Uh, he's just trying to mind his own business. Maybe a little bit too much. I mean, I'd be asking some questions, too. But, whatever. <laughs> Do you think it's because Miriam just is uh, worried that he's going to fall victim to the succubi that are <laughs> occupying that house? You know, I actually don't think so. I think she just has a very weird feeling about these two. Uh, I think it stems from seeing one hiding in, uh, you know, in the uh, in the forest like she did, I guess. Well, yeah, that would definitely make you suspicious I'm, if you were a reasonable, yeah. you know, human being. But we're talking about the men in this and, film. And I guess. But you know what? Even uh, he does not seem all that interested in wanting to pick that lady up. He was never like, oh, we should pick her up or anything like that. He seems like a just a solid dude who, you know, he's a one woman kind of guy and he doesn't need any of oh, the hubbubaloob. He just doesn't know why his wife is. Or girlfriend is so caught up in everything. Uh huh. So what you're saying is he's hiding something. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that uh I'm sure that's a conversation that's happened before in the world. <laughs> so what you're saying is he's definitely hiding something. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can move on. Man. Some hardcore shit around here. Um, that's the end of that 20 minutes as well. So we're going into another 20 if you had anything else to say. I mean, the story pretty much shows you everything. So, I mean, there's not much to comment on other than how beautiful everything's shot, how erotic all the sex scenes are. And we haven't gotten to the elbow wound yet. And that's the next 20 minutes. So, yeah, that night in the uh, mansion, uh, the driver and the woman bone again. And while he sleeps, she feeds on his cut. All right. Now we can talk about it because that's the scene. Yeah. All right. We do have to talk about this this cut on his elbow is starting to swell up and look kind of puffy and matt did that not look like vulva to you like uh, the opening to heaven's yeah, yeah, gate I, I got you yeah and the blood she was licking off from the middle of the wound did that not look like you know representing menstrual blood like she's feeding on a vagina Ugh. You know, you could have gone a week without saying it, but yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I just want to point that out because the symbol, yeah. the symbolism is there, and it is so thick. I mean, it looks very much like the, the opening to Heaven's Gate right there on his fucking inner part of his arm. It's damn near body horror. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, it's... It's something. There's blood all over it, and she's licking it off very seductively, um, kind of like how one would tease said opening with your tongue. Yeah, right. It's downright erotic and disturbing all at once. It's, yeah, it's it's off-putting. <laughs> okay, I just needed to talk about that. I'm good now. I gotcha. Um... So anyway, uh, she leaves the room and she finds her friend who's kind of in her own catatonic state in the hallway and she has blood on her. Well, she goes into her room and her dude is bleeding out and is fucking convulsing. So they both start feeding on him, stabbing him with that knife he likes so much. And then they start dragging his body out. Okay, once As again, they... super erotic and also super fucking disturbing. They you... These women murdering men is like the most sexual thing you will probably ever wish you could stop masturbating to jesus christ i'm serious you're like <laughs> what hell of a way to put it you're like the guy in clerks too what was uh eli was that his name the the other yeah yeah and saying oh, i'm God. sorry jesus <laughs> i'm sorry jesus i'm sorry jesus 
That's what like watching these murder scenes feels like. Uh, anyway, um, so then they shower, and the friend tells her that she's playing a dangerous game and that she needs to kill him. Are we not so, going to talk about the sex that they have in the shower? No, but well, I was getting there. Okay. And then and then they have sex in the shower. <laughs> You're going to let me finish that. Like, I wasn't going to put in there that they had sex in the shower. Really? Really? Is that, I mean, how long have we been doing this show? <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about how amazing their shower sex looks? I mean, it's outside, too. That's a fancy fucking European shower. Oh, my God. This was so fucking hot. Like, it was super erotic. I totally do not care that these ladies just wantonly murdered a guy for his blood at all. I'm hot for them again, and I feel horrible about it, Matt. You should, sir. What is wrong with you? (laughs) This film has shown how weak of a man I truly am, my friend. But but in the end, same. (laughs) I don't care. <laughs> I know it's fucking horrible, but like I, I'm sucked right back in, and I'm like, it's no wonder they've been able to stay here this long and feed on travelers, right? It's like, hey, I mean, they're all getting what they want out of this, <laughs> basically. Yeah, basically. Oh my god, we're terrible. At least they went out with a bang. Exactly right. The next morning, the two ladies again go out, and the camping lady, she follows them. The one traveler dude, he wakes up, and he is weak as shit. Uh, and uh, his watch is once again dead. He's, like, looking at it. He doesn't say it, but he's looking at it like, holy shit, what time is it? He gets up, and he sees, uh, like, what should be a mirror, and he, he rips some covering off. So all the mirrors are covered in this house. Um, uh, traveling lady, she goes back to her camper. Um, dude leaves the house again, and he's driving. Driving away, he should be able to get away now. Like, hey, awesome. Everything should be a okay for him. Um, but uh, then he runs into a, a, a police blockade for an accident, and he sees that um, that guy who was with him last night is uh, he's very dead. And what is with he, all these people ending up in car accidents just off the side of the property? I'll tell you, it's a, it's a tragedy. It's a mystery. We'll never know. Um, it's just it's just things that happen, Court. All right? This is all part of God's plan. So, uh, like, when every tragedy happens, it's all part of God's plan. But is so, there evidence of vampire bites, or are they specifically using I, the cuts like they are on this guy's arm? I think arm? they're using the cuts like that. I mean, they obviously are able to cut through or bite through the skin with their teeth. They have done it. I think they use the knives to make him look all cut up during a fucking car wreck. Right, but like obviously the evidence is going to show but that there's the stab wounds later. Yeah, and also here's another problem. Uh, all the dudes are naked. Yeah, in the cars, right? Yeah, they're naked in the cars. Yeah, it's clearly body dumps at this point, right? But then again, yeah. with the surrealistic nature of the film and this very dreamlike quality... Like, maybe people just don't realize they're naked. That's just how we're seeing them, you know? Yeah, we're, you know, we're, we haven't just done all the drugs, so we don't know what's going on. (laughs) Speak for yourself, sir. (laughs) Wow, I try not to even do that. So he heads back to the house, and he decides to check the cellar area. And as he's kind of in there, he actually, believe it or not, gets, uh, the wind blows the door shut, and the knob falls out. So that's, uh, strange. And, uh, so he's kind of locked down there. And uh, so he lights a cigarette and just kind of sits there because, you know, what else is he going to do? Um, he, he is, you know, there's nowhere else for him to go. Uh, so then um, that same morning, the lady traveler, she's actually painting and we see what she's painting is a, the actual mansion. She's painting the mansion. Uh, and then the other two ladies uh, walk up to her and um, the lead lady kind of makes a mark on her forehead. And pretty much says uh, that, you know, uh, uh, she says um, that they always knew they'd find each other. Okay. And then the uh, they leave. But they mark her forehead and say that. You're just like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, there's no explanation thanks. as to why, what this specifically means. And we never really and pick we ne- it up. Other nope, than we never revisit it again. Other, other than she gets entangled in their web as well. Like, that's the most explanation we get for all of that. Yeah. And none of us care. No, no one, no one really cares all that much. Just, okay. Uh, so anyway, the ladies go back to the house and they find the dude in the cellar, and that's our final clip. Open up, who's there? Fred? Open the door for me! Is that you, Fred? Yes, what's happened? The wind blew the door shut and the handle has fallen out. What on earth made you come down here? I was looking for you. 
Are you all right? I've been locked down here the whole bloody day. Do you know that your friend, Rupert, who was here last night, is dead? Dead? Yeah. I saw his car on the main road this morning. He didn't look too fit as he left last night. I told him to drive carefully. He'd had too much to drink. That's terrible. Poor Rupert. Yeah. And now I'd like to get out of this damn cellar as soon as possible. Come on. I'll take you upstairs. Yeah. Let's go. And what's more, there's a few things I'd like you to explain to me. All right, is it just me? Or, it's, I mean, another red flag where the woman went, oh, yeah, that's that's so terrible. He was found dead. Hmm, so awful. So, again, it'd be like, uh, you know what, guys? I think I'm out of here. Uh, I don't think I don't think any of this is for me. <laughs> While what you were saying is 100% rational. Yeah. Them titties. Them titties, though. Yeah, god damn, them titties. <laughs> Always them titties. All right. That's how so- stupid and base men truly are, no matter how much we want to pretend that we're not. We're always going to get suckered in to the sex. Just be glad you weren't born a praying mantis, right? I, oh, fuck, right? We're just... All you live for is to get your head bit off. Kind of true, anyway. Yeah, well, that's also true. Uh, we uh, run away. Uh, the the traveling lady runs back to her camper, checks her forehead. Like, what the fuck did what's all that about? Um, then um, the traveling dude and lady they start to go to Bone Town, but he passes out and she feeds. And then her friend comes in and she starts feeding on him. And uh, then they they bone while he watches and can't move. Uh, once again, super fucking erotic feels really fucking wrong why do i really want to keep watching them fucking making out covered in his blood next to what could possibly be his corpse the only thing they're not doing is scissoring that's about it (laughs) Uh, by the way that's the end of that 20 minutes as well so we're getting ready to head into the final 20 (laughs) this film is yet another in a series of movies it makes me question my own personal morality. <laughs> like, I know it's yeah. I know it's okay to get off on this stuff and think it's really hot while it's in a film, but the content of the story and what I'm being led to believe of what I'm being shown is also really fucking dark. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, and part of me feels a little a little creeped out by myself, really enjoying this more than I should. Um, <laughs> and yet I'm still so fucking confused, like about a lot of what's going on in the story. Other than I know for sure these ladies continue to lead men to their house have sex with them and then drink their blood and kill them but for some reason she's making this one guy last she's like savoring him Uh, she's savoring him part of me thinks she cares for him a little bit right so is she like turning she's like falling for him is that what yeah a little i think she she finds him fairly interesting i think she finds him as mysterious as you can because he's also not he's not some like a lot of the guys that bring in here young yo young men who are kind of babbling idiots and just happy to be around anywhere and you know he's he's not like that he's a dedicated follower of fashion yeah yeah pretty much that's (laughs) that's exactly what he is Uh, I just wanted to make a reference to the King song. We can keep going. All right. So, um, all right. The final 20. Uh, the next morning, the ladies, they wake up and they're like, hey, we, we got to get going, man. It's it's almost daytime. So, uh, you know, get your ass moving. Uh, for lack of a better word, they got to go. And um, the uh, rush down into the cellar as the day breaks. The lady traveler decides to check out the place and uh, she goes into the mansion. She looks around a bit and uh, she, uh, she she finds them. She finds the ladies and they're all sorts of sleeping. They are not waking up except for the blind lady wakes up and kind of follows uh, this lady around, um, you know, to kind of see what the, you know, what she's doing. Um, uh, the traveler goes into a room that has like a couple mummified corpses in it. I don't think it's anything she sees because she seems like she would be the type to freak out upon seeing that kind of thing. So I don't think she sees it. Um, but it's there. Seeing it or not, uh, it's, it's, it's there. Um, so that's probably less than ideal. <laughs> for, for lack of a better word. <laughs> 
Then uh, she's like trying to leave the house. I, I don't know if she's getting lost or not, but she doesn't seem like uh, anything's going real well for her at this point in time. And uh, all of a sudden she's like, uh, she's in there and she opens up a door and there's her husband or boyfriend, uh, whatever uh, the case may be between those two. He gets her out of there. He's like, what the hell were you doing in there? You know, he's kind of like, you know, you need to really kind of ease up and mind your own business because, you know, that's kind of really fucked up. This uh, sequence that. was kind of irritating and annoying, but I know they wanted to have someone be scared and wandering through an old dark house. Yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, it was it was real fucking. I don't want to say useless scene, uh, but it was it was not I what mean, I was uh, looking for. I think the intention may have been to use her to build tension, but really, it just kind of feels like filler. Yeah. Because you yeah. really don't care much about her, and the fact That's that she's true. the fact that she's wandering the house and she feels disoriented and lost there. I don't just the actress. I don't buy what she's doing either, and it. I just like I don't know. This was the part of the film that really kind of brought me down a little bit, and I didn't enjoy this part as much. But I was really getting into it up until this point, and this isn't super super long. But the stuff featuring this character, the the of the the couple in the caravan, that the, the painting the woman who does the painting stuff yeah when she starts roaming around the house or, or is like there in the house and scared i kind of lose not necessarily lose interest i just i'm not enjoying myself as much because i find her a bit abrasive <laughs> Well, I I think your boyfriend kind of does too, you know? He's kind of like, you know, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Oh, he dresses uh, her the fuck down for catching her. Yeah. Her. Well, yeah, because in a sense, she's breaking and entering. Not in a sense. She's fucking breaking and entering. She, yeah, I mean, she's flat out breaking and entering. Now, I mean, whether she has any justifiable things or not, that's not really for us to talk about. That's, <laughs> that's you, you still shouldn't be doing that kind of shit. Yeah, you are still trespassing on property into a building. Whether yeah. you broke or climbed through something that was already broken, you are breaking and not, entering, yeah. Yeah, that is not your place to be doing that. But, hey, you know. We all make mistakes. So the actual traveling dude, he sees that they're leaving. Uh, and he tries to get their attention by hitting the glass, but he's so weak, he can't really do anything. Then the ladies, they bring another guy home. And the first traveler guy, he's still up in his room, and he's in bed. He can't get up. He's freaking out about how there's another guy here, and they're going to do to him what they did to him. And uh, they're going to do this guy what they already did to him. He starts freaking out, and we see the first lady's behind him. And she's rather enjoying it. So now I'm not so sure she actually likes him, because she's enjoying the fact that he's losing his fucking marble. Yeah, at least at this juncture, she's clearly indulging in torturing him mentally. Yeah, so they are not close. <laughs> uh, she must be savoring him because yeah. he mu there must be something about him, whether like he's super sweet or maybe he's just super really good in bed, or maybe she just likes the way that like the inside of his elbow reminds her of a vagina when she licks it. Maybe he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe she just wants to torture him just for the fun of it. Whatever the reason is, she's keeping yeah. him around and she is definitely toying with him. This is evil intent all the way through it. Yes, that is uh, that is fact. It's definitely dark as fuck. Yeah, right? Um, so then we have a whole wine tasting thing. It, this is kind of a lot of filler where this guy's being pretentious as fuck, how he knows wines from everywhere, and he's all guessing, like, wine, what kind of wine they have. Um, it's blood, though, right? Like, he's out of his fucking mind and he's drinking blood. No, it's just wine. It's wine, but it's it's because he would know if it was blood or not. Uh, he is a wine connoisseur, uh, but it's Carpathian wine. And only Carpathian would choose New York. So anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, he was a pretentious douche. And at this point, I just wish they'd kill him already. Oh, we're getting there. I mean, you can't rush love like that. Savor <laughs> it, my friend. S savor it all. Because it'll be there. And it'll be good shit. So... Uh, uh, yeah, I even noted down because only a Carpathian would like, because it's one of my uh, favorite Ghostbuster 2 lines, only a Carpathian would come back and choose New York. Um, as they drink more wine, he notices his watch stops, so something about this place is mystical, of course. Yeah, clearly uh, time does not exist in this locale. Yeah, uh, it's... Something happens, and, you know, no one knows what the fuck it is, and it'll never be explained to us, which kind of, I think, helps the movie, makes you fucked up a little bit more. So, fuck it. Why not, right? Yep. Why not get more fucked up? Yep. They're down in the wine cellar now, and they all start making out. And uh, this guy's thinking probably to himself, uh, life's uh, 
Life's pretty fucking good. Um, and uh, then uh, while making out, uh, they just start fucking killing him, biting him, using a knife, stabbing him. I mean, they really fucked this guy up three ways from Sunday. It, it's really enjoyable to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, the murders are super fucking erotic when these ladies are doing it, and you feel and awful it, for being so turned on by it. You really do. Especially. Especially this one a little bit more for me because it's also um the because they only have kind of like a spotlight in this dingy cellar so it's 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 even a creepier lady <laughs> if that's possible. <laughs> so what you're saying is you've got a serious fear boner for this scene. I I yeah I do I really really do. Um, <laughs> awesome yeah uh, yes. I don't disagree uh, yeah this film definitely works on that level with you quite a bit yeah it really does. Um, the, uh, first dude wakes up and he starts actually making his way getting dressed slowly, but surely he's, he's kind of getting himself put together. He looks and, like shit, uh, man. He looks like shit and all that kind of stuff. And he's, he's trying to get out of the house. Uh, we then see the two women are dragging the other guy's body out of the mansion. Um, the, uh, dude makes it to the camper and they let him in and they're checking him out and they're like, we got to get him to a hospital. And the boyfriend, he's like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go start the car. Well, he goes, starts the car and those two women pop up and they have the craziest fucking looks on their faces. It is the creepiest fucking shit. And they kill him, uh, pretty fucking handedly. Um, and, uh, not, not that that's, uh, enjoyable for him at all but he's uh he's definitely dead uh it, um, it was for us the audience to watch yeah and then uh the uh girlfriend comes out and the she sees him dead and she starts freaking and then the two women just rush out of the darkness and that was freaky as shit that's something that that's the nightmare fuel right there <laughs> that you know you don't want to have to deal with but there, there, there you go <laughs> have, have a good time what's really interesting is they have this very um like sexual thing about them even when they're very predatory like they're very clearly hunting and about to eat like when they're yeah. charging it's still like this very like erotic and beautiful thing where you're like whoa look at that oh i'm dead yeah yeah now you're now you're gone yeah See you later. and the way that they film it it, it is it's mesmerizing the, the way that they film their, their motion and the way that they come at them and that's I, I think they fuck with the like they maybe filmed it at a different uh frame rate than what were being displayed because their motion seems very supernatural and very unrealistic but at the same time very smooth and fluid you know and it just it's unsettling yeah. and i think that's what makes it so fucking creepy and it's just again so well crafted and that's the the just the craftsmanship in this film the the time and attention they do to the shots and the way it feels like they're fucking with frame rates even though they might not be because somehow it just doesn't feel right even if like and if that's the way the actresses are just moving on their own that's incredibly fucking creepy too yeah. like if they have that kind of body control whatever it is it just does not feel right and the film basically is successfully giving you the scary porn thing that dean lerner was looking for for horror yeah. porn i had no idea how quickly the horror community and it is a community how <laughs> how quickly the horror community would wake up to the idea of scary porn. <laughs> I wanted to release books that would give the reader a boner, but leave him too terrified to do anything about it. <laughs> Within the week, I'd coined the phrase, books that will scare you stiff. <laughs> We'd opened up a new Horosica division, and our sales just went silly. He wanted you to have a boner, but to be too scared to do anything about it. And that's what this film does. Well, then, um, because, hey, it has to happen. They drag her to the cellar, rough her up, and tear her clothes off. And then uh, they cut her throat and kill her. The next morning, they run, and they're outside, and they run to this gravestone and just look at one another. And the other lady's like, no, we, we she's like, we got to go. And the other lady's like, no, we shouldn't leave him alive. But they have no choice. Then we see the other dude. He, he actually does get back to his car, and he passes out. He's then woken up by a realtor showing said mansion. Um, he's, he says, you know, get, he thinks he's just a drunk, tells him to get out of there. There's empty bottles of wine in his car. He's like, just get out of here. And he goes, well, let me explain. He goes, there's no explanation. Get out of here. Showing an old couple of the house saying that there are two ladies who were murdered there. Uh, they may haunt the place according to, you know, legend and all that. And, uh, the husband and wife who are gonna look at it are interested. Roll credits. 
right. So the ladies were running away from the house, but this cycle is just getting reset, right? Because they're going back to their graves for now. Yes, I think so. I think they had to head back to the graves and eventually they'll return. Yeah. So then I think that's where they're going like every morning or whatever when we, we see them. I don't think every morning. I think they go down to the cellar to sleep and then they go and, and to, they go out to get another victim. I think now they have to go back for a sustained amount of time. I think they only get to come out maybe during the anniversary of their death. <laughs> okay. And, that, that. and then I think another thing they were going to go for with this, and the reason why these two ladies like torturing this guy, is somehow this guy is somehow the guy who shot them. And I think that just was all cut out. And that's why like the hotel person knew him. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's as good an explanation as any as to why they were. Yeah, and he's like, and he's that's why he gets freaked when the guy thinks he knows because he's like, nope, I, I don't want to get nabbed for the murder here. <laughs> and then maybe, maybe the reason why he's can he doesn't recognize the ladies is he was just some dude going through town murdering. And so he didn't really look at who he murdered. He just went, opened up the door, shot and left. Okay. That's even weirder, uh, <laughs> but it's a possibility The the film leaves it so open to whatever interpretation you, you definitely want. And I never really look that deep other than just that. This is what's happening. This is the guy that got stuck. There's some reason they're keeping a hold of him. And then at the end, they somehow let him live and yet make it look like he's drunk as fuck. Yeah. There's like a ton of wine bottles left in his car. And, and who knows the quality of what his life is actually going to be like. I mean, you know, you lose enough blood, you know, that took years off his life probably. Yeah, he's probably not going to live very long if but he does. What a time. <laughs> but, but what a dime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to have stories for the rest of his short life. Yeah, right. I mean, he's just like, while he's on life support talking to doctors, he's like, oh my God, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you're it not. was crazy. <laughs> Listen, these two chicks were murderous ghost vampires and they killed every man but me because my dick was so good <laughs> wow you, you know that's how he's gonna be <laughs> you know you want to argue that fact but you can't <laughs> you would hope that he'd be a bit more modest and say something a little yeah. bit different than that yeah no nah, no nah, that's not what he's gonna do nope, that's not what he's gonna do <laughs> When in reality, they just really liked the way that his elbow vagina felt when they were drinking blood from it. Yeah, well, they ain't there to tell the story, are they? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. Let this man have a little bit, all right? He was tortured over time, bled out of like like five nights in a row. Let him have this. <laughs> okay, so the horror elements are definitely there in this, and it gets really extreme when it goes there, but they really space him out with a lot of this really serious erotic film stuff, like, like I, very erotic yeah. sex. I didn't feel scared. I always I felt uncomfortable throughout the whole movie, and the only time I got like kind of scared was at the end, especially when the two girls were kind of almost feral and like rushing out of the night. That kind of freaked me out. Yeah, when they were keeping it under control, and you know they they weren't like desperate for blood. Yeah, they definitely yeah. felt less creepy, and it was more erotic. And then when they were like hungry, ready to just rip something apart, it was still super erotic. <laughs> the way they were looking at everything, like it was food and i really didn't want it to be and that terrified me more than anything because i think i would have fell for it yeah right yo mom yeah yeah dude listen we're both very dead (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) let's just hope we're that pretentious like wine guy who didn't get to do shit he got fucking whacked (laughs) like at least every other guy it seems like because they're dude got some action that wine guy he was so pretentious or like fuck no (laughs) it just killed him (laughs) They fucking murdered him just to shut him up. The blood was just a bonus. This is why these are probably the two nicest killers out of any movie we've watched in the history of the show. They at least bone the dudes. They're like, let's give him a fun time, and then we're going to kill him. (laughs) Except for Wine Dude, who was just a pretentious prick, and he had to die right away. (laughs) So the moral of the story is, don't mansplain Wine 200 years old ghost vampires. 
That's right, because it's not going to end well for you. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this film. Uh, you definitely, like, there's not a lot that we can really kind of talk about because it's mostly just erotic sequences. And yeah. you, 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 there's only so much, like, gyrating hips and implied lesbian sex. Um, and some 69ing in this. You know, there is some really, you know, very erotic stuff. The only stuff. thing missing was the scissoring. <laughs> Fine, there was no actual scissoring. And you don't really see much full frontal nudity, but there's a few shots. But there, yeah. there's not like you're not going to see bumping donuts and you're not going to see no. genital on genital contact of any kind, really. Just to kind of wrap up my thoughts on vampires, it's a really wonderfully shot film. There's a lot of seriously erotic and beautiful sexual sequences that are in it. Uh, there's a lot of seriously disturbing stuff that is also very erotic and sexual. And you have to kind of sort through your own feelings about that because Matt and I are still very confused on how we feel. But, we are very confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah. Definitely yeah. this film uh it it leaves you with a very deep sense of unease and uh it it leaves you feeling very uncomfortable which means it's very much a horror film. It it yes. it sets out to make you feel uneasy and it definitely does that for multiple reasons that you may not personally be ready to deal with while watching it. Yeah, I, yeah, it's uh it's not the it's 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 not something you watch to be comfortable. <laughs> Although it may be something you watch to masturbate. Now we're going to the fucking break. Yeah. Alright, so that was Incubus Succubus. If my compilation that is uh, the Vampire Guild compilation is to be believed. So, yeah, I bought me a uh, goth compilation about vampire songs when I was about 13 years old. That's how old this fucking CD is. Damn. Nice. <laughs> Some deep fucking cuts from in my collection from years nope. and years and years ago. No shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> That's like 29 years old. <laughs> Almost 30 years old, that fucking CD. Uh, but it's not nearly as old and stale as our PSYOP news. All right. Uh, this one uh, I found. Uh, man uh, swinging hatchet used wheelchair to bulldoze into a strange wife's apartment police say wait 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 uh, wait 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 yeah you want that article title again because that's why i picked it yeah re read that to me word for word slowly man uh-huh swinging hatchet yeah used wheelchair uh-huh to bulldoze uh -huh. into a strange wife's uh -huh. apartment okay so a man in a wheelchair wielding a hatchet bulldozed into her apartment I'm that's how I would have read it, but uh, let's find out. All right, this is out of Salt Lake City, Utah. A Salt Lake man was arrested Saturday after police say he used his wheelchair, bam, okay, as a bulldozer to break into his estranged wife's apartment while swinging a hatchet. How weak is that fucking door? <laughs> I, mean, I don't think fucking wheelchairs are all that great to fucking bulldoze into something. Juan Manigula, 56, was booked into the Salt Lake County Jail for investigation of aggravated burglary and two counts of aggravated assault. Jesus. Saturday evening, yeah. Saturday evening, Manugla uh, used a hatchet to try to gain entry into his estranged wife's apartment near Old 2000 South dummies. and 200 East, according to... God damn, those are some weird fucking streets for the fucking... No wonder Utah. Fucked up. <laughs> according to a police booking affidavit, fucking Mormons. Uh, when the... <laughs> 
When the homeowner opened the door to see what was happening, Minuglia used his 400-pound battery-operated wheelchair as a bulldozer to force the door open and push his way into the apartment. That's Holy how. Fuck. It's a 400-pound yeah, battery-operated fucking wheelchair. That's yeah. how he bulldozed the door. Damn. Holy shit. <laughs> he weaponized that shit. No kidding, man. I'm just saying. Uh, the resident and his legal cohabitant wife tried to keep Manunga from forcing his way inside, but they could not close the door no move the wheelchair, the affidavit states, adding that it all occurred while he was swinging a hatchet at them and saying, I'll kill you. One of the victims <laughs> sustained injuries during the aggravated assault while attempting to disarm the man of his hatchet, the affidavit says. The altercation only stopped when the man was disarmed, subdued, and the joystick was used to reverse the wheelchair out of the apartment. Okay, we need to talk about this, that's right? A, that's a hell of a visual right there. Yeah, we need, to, we need to talk about this. This article could have very much been cybernetic man wielding hatchet tries to murder some people in a house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> he's basically using the chair as a weapon and therefore it's cybernetics at this point. He's fighting with this shit. Yeah, yeah, he's we're, we're it's the the cyborgs, it's Skynet. It's taking over. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily that far because Skynet's not in control of this madman. He's just it, not even in control of himself. It's getting ready. I don't know why you can't see this. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrifying. It's horrific. I don't know what's going on. This is not the sickness with which I am down. (laughs) All right. Um, So police reported seeing evidence of multiple hatchet strikes and damaged drywall reportedly caused by the bulldozing wheelchair. Officers located the man who lived in the same complex, and he said he went to the apartment to collect a debt from his estranged wife and brought... Uh, brought the hatchet because it was a family heirloom that belongs to her and he wanted to show it to her. Right. <laughs> that, According to the affidavit. <laughs> that is the most plausible but defense. It's clearly yeah. bullshit I've ever heard. That's, uh, that's going to be something else for him. Um... Police said he had no answer when asked about the chop marks of the door or how he was inside the apartment. <laughs> so, no answer there. He's like, I, I, I'll tell you, I just don't know. <laughs> Look, I didn't mean to break the break. I just happened to be testing his durability and found that it failed. And then I didn't toss it in the woods out of anger. I just placed it in the woods so it could be back with its family. Well, listen, if anything, my wife, my extreme wife should thank me. I found weaknesses in the door. I'm trying to help people. (laughs) I just demonstrated to them how I could very easily hurt them were they not to pay me back, and I wanted to, but I clearly did not. Yeah, so, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh I, man i do not think a jury is going to believe his story N- no something tells me uh this is this is gonna go poorly for him is, is that it for the story that's it let's do another one because that was pretty crazy and yes. other horse uh, sex news uh let's see here let me find one all right uh Suspect who stole U-Haul calls police and asks for deputies to stop chasing him. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This is yet another headline. I'm sorry, but I'm going to need you to back up and say that to me slowly, okay? Will do. Suspect uh-huh. who stole U-Haul. Okay, the suspect who stole a U-Haul, okay? He stole the U-Haul. He calls police. Right. And asks for deputies to stop chasing him in the middle of the, the police chase. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and take a drink before I read this fucking thing. This horse sex is a thing. Finally, I find it is it. a thing. Yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah. plug that in all throughout this episode. It'll be fine. <laughs> Jesus wept. I, I'm just saying. Every day we fur- we stray further and further from God's love. Um, <laughs> no, this has nothing to do with God. This is the future that idiocracy predicted happening way too fast. Yes, well, Adams County, Colorado, a driver who allegedly stole the U-Haul truck called police dispatch and asked for deputies to stop chasing him after they located the stolen truck. 
On round 40 a.m. on Saturday, Adams, I'm going to be willing to bet alcohol played some sort of role in all this. Some kind of intoxicant, possibly yeah. even drugs, may be a factor in this. Yes. At around 1.40 a.m. on Saturday, Adams County Sheriff deputies located the stolen U-Haul parked at a convenience store in the corner of Federal Boulevard and West 80th Avenue. When deputies approached the vehicle, the driver took off. Police pursued the truck, and the driver called dispatch to ask why he was being chased and wanted deputies to stop. Deputies had to use tire deflation devices, and the vehicle finally stopped at West 72nd Avenue and Pesco Streets, where the driver was arrested. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Jesus Christ, man. Talk about the fucking balls, right? Like, uh, Right? Yeah. Like, how stupid do you have to be to think that that's going to work, right? Like, I think just stupid enough. <laughs> I mean, like stealing a U-Haul is one thing because they're not, yeah. it's not an inconspicuous thing to steal. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like U-Hauls yeah, are no, pretty I easy get to it. spot yeah. and very easy to identify as the proper one that is missing because they're like coated with a barcode and shit, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, and, and they're big. Pit, and it, it's U-Haul all over the side of those things. Right, you need to. Just, all it says is fucking U-Haul. You need to paint spray that motherfucker the minute you steal it, and you need to make sure yeah. you pull any low jack or whatever else may exist on that fucking thing. Exactly. And while you're at it, pull the fucking governor out of it. It makes it to where it can't go above sixty-five. <laughs> but um, no, our man right here. They, they have the gall to call. He goes, well, I don't even know why they're chasing me. Can you just tell them to stop it, please? Because it's really annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> There is always hope for this guy. You can't pay your bail? Yeah. Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, most men can. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is uh, it, this is a dark, dark future for humanity. Uh, if, this uh, is, if this is the level of criminal that we're dealing with. <laughs> yeah, we won't live to see it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's future other people's problems, not us. <laughs> I just I sincerely, sincerely hope that, like, people just aren't this dumb. Like, I, I hope there's still smart people being born to somewhere. Um, possibly, but I'm gonna go ahead and say probably not. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am thinking I should have probably had kids in the long run. It might have helped out the planet. Uh, yeah, you know, you can hope, but I, I tell you, I, I have a pretty decent one, and I, I don't know, man, there's a lot that just don't seem... You know what, though? I'm gonna say this. The kids... In, because, you know, we kind of think of this planet as, see, all these people are people probably in their 30s or 20s. And I think the generation behind them, which is my son's generation, the kids who are getting ready to graduate high school and all this, I, th I think they look at that generation the same way we're looking at it. All the social media influencers, uh, the people who do, like, weird shit online and videos to try to get their views, I, I believe... You know, because that was cool for that generation. The generation behind them is always going to rebel against that. And I have this feeling, like, if anything, like, a lot of my, like, the my son's contemporaries, they look at that and they go, that is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen. Because most of them I know are trying to either save up for college, get good grades to go to college, and, and produce in the world, and, and, and not be dumb like this. So... <laughs> Maybe, just maybe there's hope that because these people did this so stupid and so much in public that the other generation behind them was like, well, that's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen and they don't want to do it. Something that I actually was kind of trying to talk about, I can't remember to who it was recently. I might've been someone in my family or one of my friends, but it was on my trip back to visit my loved ones. And mm -hmm. I was trying to say that the world is operating on performative cruelty and stupidity. So the most rebellious punk thing you can do is learn and feel for other people right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the most anti-establishment thing you can do is to actually educate yourself, uh, learn through schools and your, your teachers and all that, and then be kind to your fellow person. Yeah, that is pretty, because those two things are not looked at as popular by a lot of people right now. Yeah, uh, yeah it's the most punk you know, rock thing you can do right now is to act kind towards your fellow man and to yeah. educate yourself to the best of your ability. Yeah. But don't be one of those people like, well, I watched a YouTube video that's educating myself because it's 
It's not. Uh, I mean, educating yourself is actually like, you know, reading books and shit. I mean, like if you're watching it for do it yourself, step by step tutorial. Oh, well, yeah, videos, that's then, yeah. that's different. Yeah. But, I'm talking about getting your medical advice from YouTube. Yeah. Don't do that shit. And yeah. <laughs> at all. Like that's fucking trust anti scientists. That's anti intelligence. <laughs> right. But somehow they've convinced everyone. No, that's fairly. That's that's being intelligent. Okay. This it's, has been the not, more, you know, and uh, this is the end of cinema. Yeah, Science we're, we're, we're more than not enough. All right. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. For those of you that are listening on the Pirate Radio Edited, that is the Coffin Shakers with the return of the vampire. It's nice. I like it. The <laughs> Coffin Shakers. The Coffin Shakers asked the question, what if Johnny Cash were bitten by Dracula <laughs> and the, <laughs> the resulting hybrid was a country singer, Dracula? <laughs> that is the question the Coffin Shakers answers for you. There you go. I, I needed that question answered. <laughs> I have several of their albums, and it, you know what? If that doesn't work for you, that's great, but it definitely works for me. That's all I'm saying. Hey, man, I liked it. If you want to find the previous instances where I have played Coffin Shakers on this show, which I definitely have, before those bots be scrubbing, that was on legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. Some of those may have actually been edited, and some of that may have been chopped out. It just depends upon if the bots have scrubbed them or not yet. But I know they're out there. There's one that I did with Brad... Uh, from the Hello, This is the Doomed Show. We did some uh, vampire movies from Hammer not too long ago. Well, quite a few years ago, I should say. And uh, I know for sure I played at least the Coffin Shakers on both of those, so there's at least two out there. And that's somewhere in the archive, Cinema PsyOps, which is legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash PsyOps. We also have a repository of all things memes for the people that is available on Instagram, cinema underscore PsyOps. I gave you a moment there while I was catching a breath oh. and you didn't take it, so I'm jumping Deep. on it. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Sorry, man. I, listen, after uh, bumping donuts, uh, I don't know, man. I'm out of it. <laughs> well, if you would like to find that in a tweet form where you can see a couple of twats being tweeted <laughs> at you on the Pornbot Haven where donuts be getting bumped, that is Twitter. <laughs> I am at court underscore Psy up there, and he is always chuckling at the thought of the words bumping donuts at Psy up, oh, Matt. I really am. <laughs> That's good stuff. You can also find our Facebook group, which is aptly named Cinema Psyops, in the groups 
tab of Facebook. You can search to find us there. I am Court Psyops on Facebook. He is Matt Psyop, but doesn't exist in any form that you can really contact. So let's just cut to the chase, everyone. Email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. More like an idea, like a scent. <laughs> well, while you're out there being tempted to what may very well be your death by the promise of sex, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bit. I was told it was urgent. Come see me tonight. In the sack, we're flirting and we dance for hours. She knew that she had me, but I didn't realize I'm sleeping with a vampire. Got lost in the city when we drove through the night. Stopped by in an alley and she kissed me while she knew that she had me. Can you hear me? Yep. All right, you're coming through on Skype. Can you hear this? You shouldn't hear that. That's nothing. Can you hear this? Yeah. Yes, I can hear that. All right. Start recording on your side. Oh, yeah. Right. I got to do that. Recording. One, two, three. Everything coming through. How's your waveform looking? Looking good. All right. So, uh, 323? Does that sound right? I think, yeah. I think sounds, last week, was like, what, like four days ago, we like did. a good we, number for, yeah. <laughs> for lesbian ghost vampires. Yeah. Spoiler alerts. Um, <laughs> yes. I mean, Jesus, we just did this, like, fucking Thursday, right? We just did Rush Week, yeah, like, three days ago. We're, 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 I mean, I thought we just left this party, but all right. <laughs> yeah, it's 323. So, let me add that to all my, my notes to make sure that I'm fixing everything up. I did not this week um, do my uh, my notes ahead of time like I normally do. For the show notes for the week, I usually do like right before the show, so I'm going to have to try and Let's sneak them in during the short run. It's a short run. <laughs> yeah, all right. Mm, 323. I think we're good. And you heard that thing you're recording. Your waveform's still good? Yep. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Hold on one second. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Oh, okay. That was nice. You call me cutting in. I like this new transition I'm where Will I get Lansdale frustrated with us, and I'm like, okay, we're done talking about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to do something do else now. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I said, quiet. <laughs> I was so bored I with the old one, you know? Work hard to yeah, yeah. The That's why I just stopped doing them. It just was like, transition. <laughs> Not that, but let's transition also, it. Yes. All right, fine. No, what? Our man, Jose Ramon Laraz, is back in the motherfucking house, and I am super happy that he is. All right. Fucking hey. Who's that again? The guy who directed the fucking movie. Oh, all right. I got you. Cool. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Did we watch some of his other stuff? Yeah. He was the one that gave us the goat sex movie. <laughs> oh, 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 wait. The horse sex? No, it was the the one where they were doing the goat uh, sacrifice. I don't know. You blocked that one out, I bet. Well, I must uh, I must have blocked that one out, man. <laughs> I remember the Emmanuel horse sex, but... <laughs> well, that was the most recent bestiality that we've been subjected Cause, to. Because this horse sex is a thing. So, I mean, it's, it's a, a whole... Th- yeah, it is a thing. I mean, we have a whole thing. <laughs> I, I don't mean, know where the other this, one is. This shows, this shows Quarterstone is horse sex. It's a thing. <laughs> It is. It is a thing. Thank you. Thank you, David. It's a very yeah. disrespectful tone, which they're very good at over there. Yes, they really are. It's something I'm so jealous of because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's something that in my youth I had uh, perfected as well with uh, my customer service voice that I think I've kind of lost in my life as I've gotten older and I don't deal with like like actual customers' customers anymore. Uh, but in the old days, I-, I had that shit down pretty pat, especially face-to-face because I, I worked at a grocery store. So, y- you know, for like five years of my life so you could get that shit down pat and i miss kind of having that ability i like not needing it anymore thank you yeah yeah you know i I suppose that's true too i like not having to beat around the bush 
<laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to. Sh- I wouldn't want to have to rehone those skills for that specific skill set again. And let's move yeah. on and go into the story. Yeah, as, okay. cu- as confusing enough as it may be. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's see here. So uh, the uh, the dude. Um, uh, um, they decide to camp out for the night. They have a camper attached to the car, and they're right in front of this uh, uh, really scary mansion. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Come to that. Um. You're like the guy at Clerks too. What was uh, Eli? Was that his name? The the other? Yeah, yeah. You're like yeah. Eli whenever he's jerking off to the interspecies erotica and saying, "I'm oh, God. sorry, Jesus." <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesus. <laughs> That's what like watching these murder scenes feels like. The the, the bestiality <laughs> clip. <laughs> the bestiality. It's interspecies erotica, you jerk. <laughs> I thought he says fuck all, but let's move on. Oh fuck all! Yeah, he might say that. You're not going to see bumping donuts, and you're not going to see no. genital on genital contact of any kind, really. Bumping donuts. <laughs> Is that too far? <laughs> you hope not, but it's stupid. Is that what you said? <laughs> I said, hold on, because I did Sorry, hold on. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were losing your shit. This hasn't happened in a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> You're laughing so oh, hard, you made on. me fucking laugh, and I choked while I was taking a drink. Puppy <laughs> <laughs> oh, donuts. That's uh. Yeah. All right. Sure, man. Okay, now oh, you got me okay. worried that that actually is offensive enough. I should cut this all out, and that's. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think puppet. Do- I don't know how that's offensive. It's just I never heard it <laughs> phrased like that, that way. before. Like, pumping uglies, all that kind of stuff. Never pumping donuts. Oh, I think that's a keeper. I'm just saying that's a keeper. I actually, a keeper. I actually worked with a lady who used that phrase, and she, uh, <sighs> she used that phrase as in she liked it that way. Oh, that's. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. I don't care, man. That's good. That's <laughs> that's why I asked if oh, it's too God. far. But like, I've I've actually I've actually heard that phrase before yeah. from a lady that okay. actually that's her thing. That's her thing, man. Yeah, I don't think that's too far at all. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever heard it. But goddamn. Oh, well, in this outtake, you. if somebody else finds that offensive, I'm deeply sorry. But like, that's they, they, that's the context I knew it in. They, they, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> 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 All right, can we get back to it? I forget where we even were. Uh, we're just, uh, we're just, we're finishing up, kind of. Uh, I think we're finishing up. I'm just talking about it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pull that shit from uh, Dodgeball where he says, that's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> gonna, a bold move. I'm going to punch that in right after you said that shit and move this to the uh, outtakes. Yeah. Yeah, I would, uh, yeah. <laughs> out there being tempted to what may very well be your death by the promise of sex kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch <laughs> We're out. all right and i have stopped recording